Today we have AEM's X-Series Wide Band Air Fuel Ratio Gauge made here in Hawthorne, California. This is their second generation high feature, high tech gauge. Let's check out what comes in the box. So you end up having your new fuel injected engine, you have an ability to do a calib custom calibration on the ECM, or even you have a carburetor with all kinds of jet changes and accelerator pump shot changes that you can make. How do you know when to make a change and where the engine's running? This gauge tells you that. So in the box, we start out with a small air fuel ratio gauge with a digital display. Again, it's 100% digital action and function and technology on the back of the gauge. This thing comes out to the top. Again, super small, super lightweight, mounts like a traditional gauge will. You can either put it in a pod or sandwich it behind a panel and tighten down these thumb screws. It's two connections, both to power the gauge and to plug into the O2 sensor that comes with the kit. So there's the gauge. Base gauges have a black bezel, black face. Now, the rest of the kit is on the other side of the box. And right here, a little Easter egg, that's JC. He's the founder of AEM, still actively involved with the company, and he comes in every box. Inside the kit, you're gonna find two wiring harnesses. One that connects to the vehicle and powers the gauge. Plugs in here on the back side. Here is Bosch's latest wideband O2 sensor. It's a traditional O2 sensor. Again, it represents Bosch's latest technology with the highest reacting, best resolution. That's anti-seize on the threads. You don't want to touch that, otherwise it'll be all over everything that we own. Here's the wiring harness that connects the O2 sensor to the back of the gauge. And there's plenty of length to put this in any engine compartment to any dashboard. Then inside the box, simple, simple install. Here's the bung. This gets welded into your exhaust system, either at a header collector or in the exhaust pipe close to the engine, but far enough away that it can sample all of the engine's cylinders. A lot of modern cars are gonna have an O2 sensor bung that you can use, and if it doesn't, then you weld this one in or have your local exhaust shop do that for you. Again, this is where the O2 sensor screws into the exhaust. So install is as simple as mount the gauge, connect the sensor, plug the sensor into the harness, and then feed and power the gauge. Drill weld the exhaust bung as needed in your vehicle, and you're done. All right, now let's take a look at what the gauge looks like when it's powered up and we can run it through its demo cycle. So here we have AEM's optional silver bezel and white gauge face. When you turn the gauge on, it'll go through a system check and you'll see that it will heat the O2 sensor so that it will be able to read actively when the engine starts up. So you're seeing it priming and basically preheating the O2 sensor. Then, because this isn't hooked up to a sensor, it's generating some random numbers, but this would be air fuel ratio. 14.7 to 1 is ideal. That's stoichiometric perfection. If you want to read in stoichiometric air fuel ratio, that's what the gauge defaults to. This gauge is also able to read in both lambda and O2 percentage. And in air fuel ratio, you have two levels of precision. You have four digit, which is what it defaults to, or if that's too precise, the numbers are moving too fast, you can switch it to a three digit readout by hitting the mode and select button. And now you'll get a little bit more of a simplified, not, not as much information screaming at you from the dash. If you want to read in Lambda, you keep hitting the mode button and then select, and then it will default to Lambda, both basically rich or lean. And you'll also see a digital LED indicator move around the top of the screen. 1-0 right now, perfect straight up and down. There's also the option that you can select of an O2 percentage, if that's how your calibrator or you're used to reading air fuel ratio. Now to show you how advanced this technology is, 
AEM also gives you the ability to do an air calibration of the sensor. You take the sensor and calibrate it to your standard day, take it out of the exhaust, and it will calibrate it there on the track, on the dyno, wherever you need the most precision. There's also a base factory calibration that you can select and confirm, and this will return it to the factory AEM specs. Now there's one last function, because this is a CAN-enabled gauge, you can toggle through to the CAN mode, and then you can assign this gauge or this sensor one of up to 16 positions on the CAN bus. So you decide which identity it's going to have, and then you lock it in. So AEM's second generation X-Series wideband O2 sensor, it's all about precision, it's all about keeping your air fuel ratio perfect, keeping the combustion ideal and giving you the information that you need to get that perfect calibration or tuning of your engine and seeing everything from a misfire, from a bad spark plug, this is said to have enough resolution to read a misfire from a bad plug wire at up to 4,000 RPM. And if it can see that and react that quick, it's an unfiltered signal coming from here, displaying on your dash, that will give you the precision you need, whether you run a nitrous, force induction, turbocharging, or just trying to get that perfect calibration for the most horsepower or the best fuel economy or the best air-fuel ratio possible, all from AEM, right in one box.